guys, so this is Blaze the Movie Fan and it's time for another commentary video. This time I will be commenting on the Angry Video Game of the episode Action 52. I know that video is 6 fucking years old by now, but in my opinion it's alright to do a commentary on an ancient video as long as you can either bring something new to the table or have the commentary entertaining. And I intend to do the latter. And this will be at another one of my positive commentaries. I know many people don't like positive commentaries because the purpose of a commentary is to point out flaws, but who says it has to be the only purpose of a commentary? To me, commentaries aren't much different from movie reviews. I mean, when you're reviewing a movie, you have to analyze the movie before reviewing it. Pretty much like you analyze videos before commentating on them. So, anyway, without further ado, let's begin. It's a Nin Toaster, and yes, it works. That Nin Toaster looks so fucking awesome. I wish I had something like that. All I have is this shit right here. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's a great console, but it doesn't look nearly as fucking awesome as that Nin Toaster looks. I want that Nin Toaster so fucking badly. This is not my first commenter on the Angry Video Game Nerd and it probably won't be the last one either. So far I haven't really explained why I think the Angry Video Game Nerd theme song is so fucking awesome so I'm gonna do it here. The main reason why the Angry Video Game Nerd theme song is so fucking awesome is because the lyrics suit him perfectly. I mean the Angry Video Game Nerd is playing games that are ancient and they are shitty games that make him piss. So that's the main reason why this theme song really fucking works. So yeah, this theme song is fucking awesome and I love it. Let's start with the cartridge. It's the freak misfit of the NES library. Games came in grey, black, blue, silver, gold, but clear? You can tell just by looking at it. This is a game that's so bad, it has nothing to hide. Another thing, if you play it for more than an hour, not that you'd want to, it gets really hot and smells like burning plastic. It's not because of the toaster. The same thing happens if you play it in the top loader. That's a very fucking odd design. And I mean very fucking odd. Why the hell would they want to see inside of the Annie as cartridge. Yeah, there's absolutely nothing of interest in there, so what the fuck? Yeah, no thought progress went into the cartridge. Game number one, Fire Breather. Okay, well, it's pretty self-explanatory. And would you know this is the only game on the entire cartridge that's two players only? Gee, which game should we start with? Well, how about the only game you can't play alone? Well, that's four dollars wasted already. Why the hell would you make a two? Why the hell would you make a two players only game on a cartridge that nobody fucking cares about? That just doesn't make sense to me. I mean, everyone knows that the games here are shit. So why the hell would you play any of these shitty games with another person? It's not even worth playing any of these shitty games alone. Number three, Illuminator. 
For a room that has about a thousand light bulbs, it sure goes dark a lot. Maybe the light bulbs are broken or there are no light bulbs at all. Those are two very possible possibilities. Number five, ooze. Oh, wow, a title screen? Really? Oh my god, it's, it's... Shippickle, 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 Funny. To jump over a hole, you have to tap the B button and then press over. If you're holding the B button like you normally would, it locks you vertically until you let go. It's an anomaly of game programming. Actually, when I play Mario games, I press the jump button and then let go. So what you just see, it doesn't really apply to me. Now don't get me wrong, I'm not defending this game at all. In fact, I agree that it's a piece of shit. I'm just saying that when I play a Mario game, a Sonic game, or any other fucking platformer, I press the jump button. I don't hold it. But that's probably just me. Number 9, Alfredo. Or Alfred and the Fedic. Yeah, Fedic. You never heard of Fedic? What happened? Where's the fucking game? Well, there's no game here. What happened? Did the programmers pass out? Or did they just figure nobody would check all 52 games? Well, that's $4 wasted. But I guess I can't say I'm really too excited over playing a game called Alfredo, also known as Alfred and the Fedic. Trust me, you aren't missing much. It's just as shitty as the rest of them. Number 11, Damn Busters. Those damn busters. Well, it should have been called Alien Beaver Tomato Fight. That's all it is. You're a beaver shooting tomatoes and navigating through a maze. Oops, dead end. What? the shit? You can't go back? I'm trapped? How the hell can this bypass the radar of whoever was testing this game? Either the guy who tested the game is a fucking moron or this wasn't tested at all. And I think the latter is a higher possibility. Seriously, being trapped like that and not being able to try again without restarting the game is fucking bullshit! This game is shitting me. <laughs> that joke is priceless. Speaking of shit, would you like me to shit you some candy? You can really do that? Yeah, sure. I say go for it. Alright, here goes nothing. <laughs> what kind of candy is this anyway? I don't know, it just came out of my ears. Well, here goes nothing. It tastes weird, but fucking awesome. Thanks, Pat. You are welcome, my friend. Number 13, Haunted Hill. Wow, a human being. I can't believe it actually looks like something. Man, her boobs are bigger than her head. Yeah, this is clearly tits inside. How the hell did that get past the sensors? I mean, the tits are in plain fucking sight, so what the fuck? Number 15, sharks. Yeah, sharks. Sometimes sharks, most of the time not. Well, you're stuck on this one screen, but you sure have full rain. You can swim through the ocean floor. And that's all it is, just hope for sharks to come and shoot them. 
You know, this would be a fucking awesome game if it was executed well. Because I do think that the concept for this game is fucking awesome. Because as unfortunately on fucking Action 52, the game wasn't executed well. Number 20, Space Dreams. Oh my, what's this gonna be? Why, of course, another space shooter. This time, you're a pacifier shooting at weird dolls, rabbits, and safety pins. Safety pins as enemies in a video game. Where do they come up with this stuff? Gee, what kind of enemy could I have for this game? I have 32 games left I have to program, so I have to hurry up. Ah, safety pin! That'll be perfect! Next game. <laughs> yeah, but in all seriousness, though, that was very fucking uninspired. I see that you're making a video. Would you like me to help you? Clippy, what the hell are you doing here? I'm here to help you. I'm warning you, either you get the fuck out of here or I pull the trigger. Okay, I'm going, I'm going. Jeez. Number 24, Micro Mike. Wow, look out, Micro Mike. You're going too fast. Even if you have the quickest reflexes, you'll never be able to avoid the walls or other random objects that stand in your way. If only Micro Mike would slow the fuck down. Yeah, this game is literally fucking impossible to play. And that's a major, major problem. Number 27, Non-Human. Well, isn't that an appropriate title? Everything about these games are non-human. Except for that very human-like face. Or are they aliens? What are these for? Other than the faces just being the area where you die, which takes up half the screen. Ugh, you know you're playing a great game when you can't even jump over a hole. Ugh, you can try all day, but you'll always fall down into the purple dimension of green faces. It's not that hard to jump over the hole. I tried it myself and can easily jump over the hole without any problems. Now don't get me wrong, it's still a shitty game though. The placement of the enemies makes the game unfairly difficult. Especially since it's not easy to shoot most of them. Number 29, Slashers. You're not even allowed to walk past anybody. When an enemy appears, you stop dead in your tracks and can't move until you have a punching match to the death. There's zero strategy, you just mash buttons. And not to manage jumping forwards to fight all the enemies is very fucking annoying. I mean, why can't I just walk past some of them? Number 31, Fuzz Power. Whoever came up with this is an asshole. Whoever came up with this is an asshole. Ass. Hole. Ass. Television makes a lot of sense. <laughs> but yeah, I totally agree. I fucking hate TV censorship as well. Number 34, Evil Empire. Oh, game sprite so small you need a magnifying glass? That seems to be a theme here too. Look at that. There's some crazy shit going on over there. I want to join the party. Oops, dying in midair. I can understand dying because you're jumping from too high, but can't they at least make you die when you hit the ground? Speaking of jumping, I'm gonna bring a master jumper right here. Mario! Come here! What do you want? When you jump from a high height, what happens? When I jump, I feel no injuries, but the Goombas I jump on feel a lot of fucking injuries. Alright, that's cool Mario, you can go now. Number 36, Storm Over the Desert. Ooh, another title screen. So you're an army tank shooting at other army tanks, which happen to be pink. Also, there's no way to die. Anything you touch will explode. Those pink tanks are fucking pussies. Now I'm getting tired of this. Can someone at least try to kill me? Hey you, you, get over here. 
A tank that's totally invincible is fucking awesome. I would love to have a tank like that. Number 45, Boss. Who would think boss means a frog running around with a gun getting ambushed by falling bombs? Well, he could be a boss or a gang, so there is that. Number 46, dead ant. You're an ant trying to make other ants dead ants, like the Pink Panther. Dead ant, dead ant, dead ant, dead ant, dead ant, dead ant. But if the ants make it to the bottom of the screen, you're fucked, because you can only move left and right. What makes this ant different from the rest? Oh, it's pink. And anything pink in this game sucks. How the hell did such an obvious glitch bypass the rater or the person who was supposed to test this game? This officially confirms it then. None of those Action 52 games were tested, and that just shows laziness. Number 48 Time Warp Tickers. You're a pair of fingers in checkerboard land with upside down doors. What kind of drugs were they on? Was this game even made by a human being? Time? When you kill things, it says time? What does that mean? Time to play another fucking game? This is my personal favorite Action 52 game. It's a game that's so weird that it's funny. And that's what I fucking love about it. Now don't get me wrong, gameplay wise, it's shit, just like the rest of the X-52 games. But I can't help but to fucking admire how fucking weird it is. I can't believe they sold this shit fest for $199! That's about how much it costs for a video game console, pretty much. You could take $199, stand on a bridge and just throw it all away. You'd rather do anything than spend it on a broken down dysfunctional disaster of video game programming. With games that crash, hideous jumping control, random characters, microscopic sprites, a marathon of mediocre space shooters, dying in midair, problems with proportion, misleading titles, misleading power-ups, embarrassing weapons, seizure-inducing backgrounds, lack of enemies, games you can't win, games you can't lose, games that make no sense sense whatsoever, shitty graphics, shitty music, shitty menus, and a fuck ton of other things. It should have been illegal for them to sell this rotten shitload of putrid fuck for any price. I feel humiliated to live on the same planet as someone who designed an electronic abomination of this magnitude. And this rage is fucking awesome, and it is the best part of the entire video in my opinion. Now it's time for my overall thoughts. Not only does this video still hold up, it holds up extremely well. It's not my favorite angry video given this episode, but it's definitely one of them. My favorite angry video given this episode is Dick Tracy. But this one would probably be in the top 5. Well guys, my intention was to make this commentary entertaining, and did I succeed? I sure as hell hope so. That's all I gotta say people, thank you for watching and have a great day.